this is the oldest photograph we have, 1855. Um, you can kind of see these different fumaroles vents here within the caldera of Kilauea, right over here. This is taken from Volcano House. If you guys have been there, you can see this, this bench of trees here in the foreground, right? So a caldera and a lot, the main lava lake would have been kind of behind a few more off in this direction over here. Um, 1850s, this is a, a painting. You can kind of see a very similar view, but colorized. 1865, there's a caldera wall. There's a buried inner cliff, another buried inner cliff. And there's a lava lake in there, right? If you guys have been to the Uwekahuna Bluff, Jagger Overlook, in the past, you, you might recognize this knob, which is kind of in the foreground still there today. Yeah. 1880s. There's our lava lake, right? There's the crust of it, right? And so one thing that can happen if the vents become submerged is it can start fountaining up through the crust of the lake, something like that. Right? So this might be, might be something we looked at before, or we might see in the future again, right? If I've seen it before, we might see it again. And look at this. Islands. We see islands floating within this lava lake as well. So also seeing that again. Fresnel painting from the 1880s, right? The USGS actually has published uh, um, a, a booklet that, that describes the, the value of these old paintings um, to the history of the, of the volcano, and so they've dated these, and this is kind of kind of coming from there as well. So you kind of see these big slabs of rock that are kind of kind of tipped up in there, like these big crags, right? You know, like you can kind of, you can have gas levels can kind of burst and push some of these rocks and slabs upwards, and then as they get pushed by the lava lake, they can kind of tilt and move, and you can have these really interesting craggy features right through there yeah and over here you can kind of see it looks like bubbling coming through the cross of the lake right in there right and, and this is painted almost like there's a reflection on there and of course this painting 1880 Mauna Loa is in the background if you guys remember 1880 Mauna Loa, there's fountains of lava there's a flow that comes down towards Kau there's a flow that goes to the other side towards Hilo um, and that's a whole other story as well but Mauna Loa in 1880 was also happening right 1885, Tavernier. Same kind of craggy shapes right through here, right? I know I'm ruining these guys' paintings by scribbling all over them. Maybe I can stop doing that so much, right? But I do want to point out, you know, like the, the, the gas venting through the crust of the lake once again within here. Yeah. Another little little vent right over here on the right. All right, 1885. Now we have a photograph, right? I'm going to point out there's people down in here. There's people on the very edge of the lake. You can walk down there. Um, we're within a crater collapse crater over here and so those other craters are kind of too far down to actually see any of those upper upper crater walls but it's a lot of like 1885 1886 there was a collapse we're calling it a breakdown in this caption over here and you can kind of see a big pit steaming at the bottom it might be lava down there but certainly there was a collapse and it refills from there once again 1893 by this point in time um it's refilled actually we have a perched pond right here like the lava is actually coming up and over, it spills over the edge of this crater, it kind of freezes on a cold edge, and it kind of rises this rim upwards, it kind of makes this elevated swing pool kind of a feature, right? This is an actual photograph from Brother Bertram, um, but there are other renditions of this as well, so I appreciate the photograph without my scribble, and now I can appreciate the, uh, the painting by Hitchcock, in the same scene in 1893, and you can see one of those spillovers coming right through here, Mauna Loa covered in snow in the background, fantastic painting as well. 1894, Hitchcock as well, right? This is the, the Dana Pond, as they called it. And the, that thing was rising up. You can see how much higher it is than the, than the floor level. And this is very shortly before the whole thing collapsed once again. So, filling, collapse, filling, collapse is kind of normal. So I have, we have, have a big gap in the, in the, the imagery, uh, at least that I have compiled for you guys today. 1911, we see here that caldera wall out of here. The edge of another crater on the inside. And there's lava inside of there as well. Okay. 1916, there is the, the, the crater. You guys may recognize this as familiar lava lake floor surface right in here. And once again, islands. Islands in here, right? Floating around. Many more of them than we actually have now. Right? So, 1916. And it's interesting how you could come to Kilauea every different year you see something different and that's still true today and that's what makes Kilauea such a fascinating place to visit and to study and to learn about and that's why I share with you guys is because every year it's different and that's something that you know kind of as a set aside here um, as a geologist geologic time is something that's really hard for people to actually grasp and comprehend right and so only certain places like volcanoes and glaciers does geologic, geologic change happen at the same rate as people's lives occur day to day month to month year to year 
And so I can tell you guys like that every year of my life here in on Hawaii, I can relate what was happening that year in my life what was happening that year with a volcano. And so that's something that's, that's kind of unique geologically to be able to relate the human time scale to the geologic time scale in times like this, right? So really fascinating to come and see this year after year after year. And, you know, you guys are getting a little, little glimpse of that here with the different views of different years. 1916, right? These islands are kind of sticking quite high above. Lava, lava Lake is kind of low within its crater pit over here, right? So can I see how that changes over time here? 1917, Twig Smith painting, right? Island once again. And you can see gas venting through the crust of the lake, right? And none of these, four, these images do we see a vent above pouring in and all these all these paintings and photographs of the vent is below feeding the lake from below so you can see how how that can be the case and how these things could possible possibly sustain um 1917 um this is a panel picture by walden you kind of see a crater wall with a lava lake and islands bubbling up in here another island right and an unknown similar kind of view Big island. This guy's painting it right from lake level. So you can kind of see the edge of the lake kind of lapping up here on a shore, so to speak, right? And kind of the edge of the crater way, way up above there. All right, so 1918. Here's our islands again, right? Lava lake in between. 1920. The islands are a lot shorter. I don't know if they're submerged or different islands or exactly what's going on here, but the edge of the crater and the lava level is right up to the edge of it. Quite, 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 quite high. Right, 1921, picture by Thomas Geiger himself. Look how full that lake is, right? Look how many islands are floating around in there. These guys, Geiger's, Geiger's time, used to, used to uh, document the islands moving around, and moving and spinning and figuring out the dynamics of the flow. We'll maybe pull some out some of those old old papers and, and um, share that with you guys since it's more relevant now. Since we have a lot of lakes circulating with an island in it, and once again, that'd be really really interesting to see. And that was what we had until 1924, the big steam explosion that formed Hale Mau Mau. Um, and after that, we had seven eruptions in 10 years. I've been talking about that for a while now. This is that one one month eruption in that collapse pit after the 24 um, eruption. So this is is you know maybe what we're in for, something like this, right? Lava filling in the crater quite a bit. Look, islands within a bubbling lake. Once again, you guys by now understand that this is what's normal in Kilauea. Lava Lakes and Kilauea Summit is what's normal. Not having one is weird, right? So we actually have one again. And like the fact that we have one shouldn't be that worrying. Like the lava being up here is where it should be. It's only when things change in their monitoring signals and their rift zone. And farther over, we start to get more concerned about where it might actually move. But, you know, intrusions of the rift zone and short eruptions are common. Most of the time, magma stays up at the summit. And lava lake areas have been very, very common over time, as you guys can kind of see through this presentation here. 52. We're still in the era of black and white now, right? We're inside of the explosion pit of Hale Mau Mau. It's within the caldera wall up here, right? And now we have another lava lake with islands and hornitos, little vents putting out the gas and the lava spatter, right? This one only lasted, this one lasted four months in 52, right? 54. Only three days. But down on the floor of Hale Mau once again, there it is, a big lake that filled the whole thing. 59, we had Kiloiki, that was kind of you know, off the side. The lava lakes are mostly off in this direction. So we pan a little more back to the east, and we can see Kiloiki. We talked about that a little bit yesterday, the massive fountains of lava falling out over to the west. And following that eruption, because the magma actually went from Kiloiki down on the rift zone, um, there was a collapse of the summit. Nowhere near as big as 2018, but enough that you actually can see a collapsed pit in here. And you can see lava draining into it. Now, why might that have actually happened? That's because uh, the previous lava lake from 52, 54 and 52, these ones over here, right? They were inside of the pit, so I don't have the image pulled up. But if the, if the pit is a cross section like this and your lava lakes filled it up, then you have a core in the middle of it, like a jelly donut that's still fluid as it cools on the edges, but stays hottest and liquid in the middle. And so if you can collapse a hole through the middle of that, then you can get the middle of it to drain out into a new lower pit. And that's what's happening here. I'll just give you guys a little, a little um, aside on that little thing as well. So, um, 67, 68, we had, this is one of the longest spills, something like eight and a half months of lava um, spanning across the, the, the New Year's within a pit, filling the whole, like, right, so you have a central elevated pond in here, 
and kind of spillovers come off to the sides of the things that repave the created floor, right? And of course, this is kind of setting a stage for what we saw before 2008, before the new lava lake opened up over an air, right? Um, but before that happened, more eruptions, right? So lava doesn't have to come up just through that crack. Here's the caldera crack on the southern wall showing a big fissure, right? That lasted, I believe this was uh, um, only a few hours or, you know, maybe a day or so in 1974, 1971. And again, 1974 in a similar area right through there, right? Kind of fissures along the edge of there, yeah. In 75, that, so that earthquake I mentioned, the last one on the south flank, initially called a 7.2, revised a 7.5, calculated by some seismologists nowadays as a 7.7 .7 earthquake, was enough to give our magma chamber a nice big shake. And even if you have like a bottle of champagne, once again, that has already been popped, but you give it a good shake, you might get a little bit more gas and a little bit more sputter out of it. And so we had a one day eruption in 1975, immediately following the 7.7 .7 earthquake in the pit as well. So we're in the range of having magma in a pit and having cooled interior jelly donut middles and all these kind of different patterns, these are the kind of things that could happen. We could have one day eruptions from earthquakes. We could have, you know, small collapses that are kind of, you know, small and more fissures, not within a pit, but on a, on a wall, on an upper wall of the crater, right? On a, a coming across the edge. And um, that's also possible as well, right? Here's 1982. And this fissure in 1982 is actually coming across the upper crater floor and then cutting down a wall of Halimama crater, and then cutting across the floor of Halimama crater. Puts so that lava both within the pit and in the upper, upper cut a floor right in here, right? And interestingly, this is like the east part. This is not that far off of where the current vent of 2020 is located, except that we're now down quite a bit, right? Or down um, on the order of, I would guess, 1,400 feet without doing a math very quickly, right? So that is the history of the caldera there. And so I will leave it at that. I've been going on for a while, you guys. I 